So we've done a few examples of how to do the counting. Uh, if I had four gas molecules, for example, but what if I have 20? Uh, writing down all those microstates is going to be a pain. So we'd like to learn a faster way of doing this. So the goal is to is to determine a general formula for the number of microstates. Um, for a given macrostate. And I'm going to write it like this. So n choose n1. So n is the total number of particles. And n1 is going to be the number um, on the left, let's say. So uh, it's written this way and it's said in words n choose n1. So it's like out of a total n, I've chosen a number n1 to be on the left. And so we're kind of going to try to motivate what is the formula that I can do uh, here so I don't have to write everything out every time. Um, it might help to do a, a, an example one more example just to motivate it. So let's do here I have n is equal to 5. And let's say I'm picking n1 equal to 3. So I want to know the number of possible ways I can choose 3 from 5. So that's going to be 5 choose 3. So I drew one of the microstates above, but uh, how many others are there? If you think about it, um, in order to pick three, I have to pick one, and then I have to pick another one, and then I have to pick another one. So how many ways do I have of picking the first one? So I like to envision all five of them kind of sitting out, and I'm just picking one to be on the left. So if there's all five sitting there, I have uh, five ways, five choices for picking the first one. Now how many ways to pick the second one? How many ways to pick the second one? I already chose the first one, so now there's only four left on the table. So there's four ways of picking the second one. And then how many ways to pick atom number three? Well, there's three left, so five. Oh, there's five times four times three. So what's the total number of ways? To pick three from five would be five times four times three. However, that's not quite the whole story because uh, the three that I pick, this is counting, for example, if I pick A first and then B second and then C third, I have chosen A, B, C. But if I chose B first and then A second and then C third, I have B, A, C. And those aren't different. That's still the same microstate. I still have the same three balls on the left. So we need to correct for this factor. So we're trying to work out a general formula for how, how many microstates lead to a given macrostate. And we're doing this example five choose three. So how many ways can I choose three and put them on the left side of this container from five? We said there was five ways to choose the first one, and then there's four ways to choose the second one because one was already taken, and then there's three ways to choose the third one because the other two were already taken. But this is not the whole story. Um, if I have ABC on the left, is uh, that's the same microstate as if I chose B first and then A and then C, or C first and then A and then B on the left. So I need to account for this fact that I'm overcounting. So I need to divide by the number of ways that I can uh, sort of permute A, B, and C. And if you think about it, there's actually six ways of doing this. So A, B, C, let me write them all out. So those are all the permutations of ABC. So any of those all lead to the same microstate. 
same microstate. So I should divide by, I'm overcounting by this factor. I'm overcounting by a factor of six. Turns out to be three factorial. So three factorial is six. And so this is now uh, a better formula that doesn't overcount. You can make this a little fancier. And I can multiply the top and the bottom by two factorial. So five choose three is five times four times three. And then I'm multiplying by two factorial on the top and two factorial on the bottom, three factorial, two factorial. And the reason I did that is because the top is now five factorial and the bottom is three factorial times two factorial. Okay. So this is the general way that you typically will see this kind of thing written. And let me generalize it to, instead of five, I have n particles, and I'm choosing n1. On the top is the total number of particles factorial. On the bottom is n minus n1 factorial times n1 factorial. So this is the total number, this is the total number of ways that you can achieve a certain macro state. Um, total number of microstates for a given macro state. Okay, so we've developed this formula kind of by example that this is the way to choose n1 objects from a group of capital N given by this formula. And this has a name, which is a binomial coefficient. For those of you that like uh, math, these are also the numbers of Pascal's triangle. So you can generate the rows of Pascal's triangle by using this formula. Um, let's check it. So just to make sure that it works, um, let's go back to the example that we did before. So I had four and I, maybe I wanted to choose one. How many ways were there? Remember the example we did, there were four. So let's make sure it gives the right answer. That's four factorial over uh, four minus one factorial times one factorial. So that's four factorial over three factorial times one factorial. That's four times three times two times one divided by three times two times one times one. And you can see the three and the two and the one cancel here and I get four. So that agrees with what we had before. Let's do one more, let's check four choose two. So how many ways were there to pick two from four? When we worked out, we wrote it all out, we got six. So let's make sure that we get the right answer. Four factorial, four, fac four minus two factorial times two factorial. That's four factorial over two factorial squared. So that's four times three times two times one over two factorial is just two squared. And the two squared cancels with the four, and I get six. And that agrees with previous. So it agrees with the cases we wrote by hand. So now you can use this formula to calculate the probability of, you know, if you have 20 atoms or 100 atoms or uh, you know, thousand atoms. What's the probability that they're all on the left? What's the probability that they're equally distributed? And so on. So to finish up this lecture, let me go back to the free expansion. I started the gas in some state, a very special state, where half of them are clumped on one side. And after a little while, it's equally spread out. It comes to equilibrium. And then it basically stays here for uh, forever. So the equilibrium state which is where it no longer changes is a 50-50 split between the sides. And the big, the big question is why is that the equilibrium state? So what's special about that state? And now you can answer that given the tools that we've thought about. 
So thinking about, let me try to make a graph here. I'm going to plot here uh, n1 divided by the total number. So this is going to be here the fraction of atoms on the left side, let's say. And then the y-axis is going to be the multiplicity omega, which is the number of ways that this can be achieved. So number of microstates that lead to this. This goes from 0 to 1. Let's put 1 half in the middle. I'll put 1 quarter here and 3 quarters. Okay. Um, for four particles, we worked it out. Um, if it was 0, it was very close. It was 1 over 16. 1 fourth, there were four ways of doing that. So like this. Sorry, I should say one. This is the number of ways. So there's one way to, to have them all on one side, four ways to have one on one side and three on the other, uh, six ways of splitting them ev evenly, and then four and then one again. So I'm going to draw a line here, even though it, it's really discrete points. You get this kind of distribution like this, where it's peaked at the center at about one half. This is most likely. But in this case, it's only slightly a bit more likely than having them um, spread out 3 to 1. This was n equals to 4. That's the case we worked out by hand. What if I have a, a larger number of particles? So let's say, for example, you have 8. It turns out to look something like this, uh, much more sharply peaked here, like this. n equals to 8. So you find it much more likely, most likely here, right, to be 50-50 split. And the others are very, very small compared to that. So it's much more likely to be spread out 50-50. Now imagine you have 1,000 particles, or 10,000, or 100,000, or 10 to the 23, like in a gas. Can you generalize this? What's going to happen? If you have a really large number, it's going to be basically zero until you get to about a half, which is the most likely case. And then you have a huge spike here, all the way up, really, really high. And then a very, very, uh, almost very, very unlikely anywhere else. So this one here is n is large. And you can see that the larger n is, the equilibrium state or the probability that the atoms are equally spread out is overwhelmingly large. So let's answer the question now. Why is this the equilibrium state when they're 50-50 split? It's because it's overwhelmingly likely the probability of having the atoms split, spread out about half and half is so much more likely than any other configuration that you never see it. Well, that's the key point. So let me try to summarize this lecture. In an isolated system, all microstates are equally likely. So we're familiar now with the, the terminology of microstates, macrostates, and multiplicity. All the microstates are equally likely. That's an assumption. But the macrostates are not equally likely because uh, macrostates that can be achieved with your larger number of microstates or a different number of ways, higher multiplicity, are more likely. The probability of achieving a certain macrostate is the multiplicity of that macrostate, omega, divided by the total uh, multiplicity. In the examples we did where I think something could be either on the left or on the right, you could calculate these multiplicities using the binomial coefficient, so using these factorials. 
And then the claim, the amazing claim is that if you have a large number of particles, like in a gas, 10 to the 23 particles, um, one of these states is overwhelmingly likely, by far most probable compared to any other state. And thus we call the equilibrium state. So because it's so likely for the gas to be in that equilibrium state that it will eventually end up there no matter where it starts. So in the example we did, the equilibrium state is where the gas molecules are equally spread between the left and the right. And that is by far the most likely situation that the gas will find itself in. And it's so astronomically likely that you never see any other state. If you start it in some other state, it will eventually end up in this equilibrium state just because it's so likely. So we have now this connection between probability and statistics and the second law of thermodynamics, why we only see certain things happen and not the reverse. It's just because they're so ridiculously unlikely that we never see it. So now we got to go to entropy. We have to think about how does entropy fit into this picture. And that's what, where we'll be going next.